Neiman Marcus has filed for bankruptcy, citing economic hardship caused by the coronavirus pandemic. Hi, Sarah. That's right. Neiman Marcus's group has received court approval of its reorganization plan. The company says it expects it'll emerge from Chapter 11 by September 30th. The retail world is changing so rapidly. And one of the goals, I think, of every retailer today is trying to really figure out uh, what retailing is going to look like over the next five to ten years. This was the final week of operation for the nearly brand new Neiman Marcus location in Hudson Yards, New York. This closure came amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, which also pushed Neiman Marcus as a whole to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. So how did this once iconic luxury retailer, operating for more than an entire century, fall from grace? In this video, I intend to look back at the history of Neiman Marcus and determine how this big name retailer ultimately failed. The story of Neiman Marcus dates back to 1907 in Atlanta, Georgia, when aspiring entrepreneur Herbert Marcus Sr., alongside sister Carrie Neiman and brother-in-law Al Neiman, were looking to invest in a new business. Natives of Dallas, Texas, the trio found success in a sales promotion firm that they founded on a two-year trip to Atlanta, during which they accumulated $25,000 of investment funds. They were initially given a risky investment offer by an emerging, virtually unknown fountain drink business known as Coca-Cola. Seriously. They rejected this proposal, however, and agreed instead to return to Dallas to establish a retail center. Upon opening in September of 1907, the local retailer was extremely successful, selling out of all merchandise, in fact, in only several weeks. The retailer, dubbed Neiman Marcus, fulfilled a highly demanded niche within Texas, luxury retail. Merchandise within the store was uniquely extravagant within the state. In fact, most of the store's primary stock was imported to Texas from high-class New York retailers by Carrie Neiman herself. This, alongside the booming oil economy of Texas at the time, contributed to immense success for Neiman Marcus and the retailer sustained this success for the years following its establishment. In 1914, however, Neiman Marcus faced its first major challenge when its Dallas store, alongside its entire inventory, was ravaged by a fire. The company recovered quickly, however, opening its brand new flagship store in Dallas by the end of that same year. This relocation proved beneficial for Neiman Marcus in the long term, igniting its nationwide expansion. Alongside opening its brand new flagship store, Neiman Marcus undertook many other significant expansion efforts. Larger store space and diversification of merchandise allowed Neiman Marcus to double its profits from 1914 in only one year. Over the next decade, Neiman Marcus continued its upward trend, expanding again in 1927 and even launching a revolutionary fashion show, garnering critical acclaim throughout the 1930s and 40s. It was also during this time that Neiman Marcus entered the middle class market alongside luxury retail, in part due to the Great Depression and World War II. However, despite these adverse times, Neiman Marcus continued to grow exponentially. In the 1950s, leadership was inherited by Stanley Marcus when his father Herbert Marcus Sr. and Aunt Carrie Neiman passed away. 
Under Stanley Marcus' leadership, Neiman Marcus began opening other stores in the Dallas metro area, and eventually one store farther away in Houston. In 1967, the retailer merged with Broadway Hale Stores, which allowed the department store to expand outside of Texas and into many other major cities across the country. At its peak, Neiman Marcus had stores in over 30 cities and around 20 states across the U.S., giving it a national reputation. Starting in the mid-1980s, Neiman Marcus underwent a number of notable changes. Primarily, the company changed ownership numerous times. Neiman Marcus first was listed publicly in 1987, partially splitting its previous merger with Broadway Hale Stores, and subsequently parent company General Cinema, also known as Harcourt General. However, Harcourt General still owned a majority share in Neiman Marcus until 1999, when Neiman Marcus became an independent group. Additionally, three years later in 2002, Stanley Marcus, arguably the most influential figure in Neiman Marcus throughout its history, passed away. Stanley Marcus made many contributions to Neiman Marcus throughout his life. Renowned fashion shows, fine art exhibitions, and popular Christmas catalogs were staples of Neiman Marcus that can be directly attributed to Stanley Marcus. Neiman Marcus even saw its exponential growth and expansion across the United States under the leadership of Stanley Marcus. It's no doubt that his death, alongside the turn of the millennium, signified a new era for Neiman Marcus. This is clearly indicated by even more changes in ownership in 2005, when Neiman Marcus was sold to private equity firms Texas Pacific Group and Warburg Pincus for around $5 billion. For a time, this meant that Neiman Marcus was once again privately owned. More notably, however, was the later purchase of Neiman Marcus Group in 2013 by another pair of private equity firms, Ares Management and the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board. Two years later, in 2015, Neiman Marcus was yet again made public as well as an independent group. However, the 2013 purchase left Neiman Marcus several billion dollars in debt, which it would carry through the rest of the decade. Marcus filed for bankruptcy today amid the collapse in sales during the pandemic. Neiman Marcus has declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy. It's among the first national retailers to do so amid the coronavirus pandemic. On May 7, 2020, Neiman Marcus ultimately filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The filing came as a direct result of the coronavirus pandemic, which induced great harm on Neiman Marcus and other similar department stores. However, there is no doubt that Neiman Marcus's lingering debts also contributed to the bankruptcy. Neiman Marcus seems to be widely regarded as an overpriced retailer for the elite, which is to be expected of a store that specializes in upmarket retail. However, an infamous rumor about Neiman Marcus's cafe, dating back to the 1930s, suggests this to an even greater degree. As the story goes, a mother and daughter enjoyed a chocolate chip cookie so much that they asked their server for a recipe, which the server agreed to for a price of $2.50. However, the mother was charged $250 instead of $2.50. While the story has been disputed as an urban legend, the explosive popularity of the rumor cemented the retailer as exorbitantly priced in the eyes of many. 
Neiman Marcus always catered to a relatively small pool of affluent customers, so it's not very surprising that a collective struggle over the last several years among retailers as they lose customers to online shopping would also have a significant impact on Neiman Marcus. So what does Neiman Marcus's future look like? Well, the department store has received fairly generous financial support from its creditors and has begun to emerge from its bankruptcy. It will likely continue business for the foreseeable future, especially as the pandemic subsides, but will face increasing competition from online retailers. So only time will tell what lies ahead for Neiman Marcus. Thank you so much for watching.